Welcome, baseball fans, to State of MLB's News of the Week. As baseball fans like myself across the country continue to be eager for the start of the season, let's dive into where the talks and negotiations between the Players Association and the league are. Unfortunately, we've seen a lot in the news about the money going back and forth between uh, the pro rated versus the 50 50. I'll get that in just a second, as well as. Uh, Players being some being willing to play anyway, others being unwilling to play anyway, and now Scott Boris, the uh, infamous agent and guy who likes to get mega deals for players, chimes in. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, the current status of the talk has essentially stalled out. Max Scherzer, who is one of the heads of the Player Association Negotiation Committee, has basically stated that after hearing MLB's proposal and neither one being willing to budge on where they are financially, there's no reason to talk any further regarding starting the season up because they are too far apart. And not just on the money issue, but also on a safety, on families, tenure, etc. Uh, it's, it's like watching the, the right wing and left wing in the government go tit for tat in politics. Neither one is able to come to some sort of common ground in the middle there. But essentially where it is, is on the money front. Um, players have already negotiated before, during spring training, that they were willing to accept a pro salary, which means that they are taking their full season salary and slicing it down only to the games they play. So if they only play 82 games, they only get paid half their salary. If they play more than 82 games, then they get paid accordingly for the extra games. Where this hits a stomach is the fact that we don't know when stadiums are gonna be able to allow fans in again, and that they, between the gate uh, tickets, the merchandise sales, the concessions, and everything else going on in the stadiums, if you have empty stadiums, that is a massive amount of revenue for the owners that they're not generating. And fundamentally, yes, you're talking about multi-millionaire players versus billionaire owners. They have the cash flow, obviously, because they were able to buy the team and pay for them with salaries. And in a given year, they're also expecting a certain degree of revenue to pay for the salaries. They are a business, businessmen by, uh, at large, and therefore they are looking at baseball as a product to the economy by which they can sell it and make a return on investment. They're not here to do a charity. And yes, there are some clubs who have provided for the first couple of months uh, some wages to minor league players, or some wages to stadium workers, all the people who don't get anything uh, while the season's installed, while major league players have those contracts and have sufficient revenue to float themselves to the beginning of the season and are not taking a salary right now. Um, having said that, some of those clubs have also uh, started uh, furloughing their stadium staff and their minor leaders, and we'll get into that in just a mo moment here. But for in terms of ma the major league season, the owner is saying, well, if we're only going to be generating X number of dollars from broadcasting rights, We'll just split that with you and call it a day. And players saying, no, I want my fair share of my salary that's already been negotiated and signed and, and locked into place before the pandemic ever started. And they're trying to show their flexibility with the programming schedule. So they're so far apart on, on the salary thing. The safety concerns being the fact that using the advice of medical experts, baseball has saying, well, in order to err on a side of caution, not only are we going to have testing on X number of days, but we're also going to make certain equipment and other resource shared resources off limits. And the players are going to be are, are saying, look, how we're, we're they're not exactly seeing eye to eye on the frequency of testing. They're also not seeing eye to eye on the on the use of facilities and other shared equipment to help them throughout the, throughout the season that they feel are critical. And the owners are saying, well, we're trying to put your safety first. The use of this equipment is optional. Therefore, we're not going to make it available at all. And that's just on a safety issue here. Then, of course, you have families where a lot, some of these players live near their families. Other players are um, may have to leave for a certain period of time. And basically, some players are saying, well, Depending on how you organize this thing, if we can't have families with us locally, if we can't be in our home stadiums, things of that nature, 
we are not going to spend six months away from our families. Some of these players have newborn babies, they want to be home with their families. Other players have younger families, etc. There's various reasons why they want to be able to see their family from time to time. And if they can't see them for six months, that's a non-starter for them. Others are saying, well, we are uh, still in arbitration years. We want to get past that those first few years of, of tenure so that we can get into a point where we can start negotiating above league minimums here and below, uh, above what our arbitration board would give us. Therefore, if we don't play this season, do we still get the tenure for it? If we have shortened seasons, do we still get the playing time for it? There's so many various areas where the, the Players Association and the league are just so far apart. That right now, it looks like if uh, it's been claimed that if it's, the season isn't negotiated um, this week, then it's just not going to happen. There's not enough time to get everybody in place, put plans in, 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 into implementation, get players, players together, get a pseudo spring training going, and get started by the proposed deadline of, of July 4th. So they'll either push it back more or they'll just, they're still in conversations. Look, at this point in time, over the money and various other issues, conversations have largely, largely stalled between the Player Association and the league. So therefore, at this point in time, we're nowhere with starting the season, unfortunately. Uh, and it's, a, it's looking more and more the longer this drags out, like there's just not going to be a season this year. <laughs> And that would just really suck for everybody because the league is losing upward of $75 million per day. Le losing the whole season would be devastating to them. Players, um, this would be killer for them because they've already accepted prorated salaries. So if there is no season, they make absolutely nothing. And speaking of, uh, of players, the minor leaguers with whom were provided a $400 a week stipend during their initial couple of months, April, May, in which their season would have normally started and they weren't having games to play, have many of them, hundreds of them have so far been released and upwards of a thousand or more could get released before all things are said and done. If the entire minor league season is canceled, then you've got thousands of players with whom have lost their, their ability to work and may not be able to get back to us in the, in the near future because these are players that are developing and not taking a significant time off from being able to play ball. We don't know if they'll ever be able to get back into the game uh, or if financial situations are going to force them from being able to get back into the game because it's quite a sacrifice to be able to put yourself through a minor league season making almost no money and then not being able to play, not being able to get your tenure, not being able to get called up and make those bigger bucks. So. There's a lot of contention going on there. There's a lot of uh, unknowns going on there within the league, within the minor leaguers. And unfortunately, as longer things um, pro stall, delay and continue not to progress towards a positive end, the more owners are starting to crack down on their graciousness on uh, helping subsidize uh, staff workers, helping to minor league players, and just outright saying, okay, you're furloughed, go cut down employment. Uh, we're releasing these players, uh, we're, we're done with this investment kind of thing. Yes, they're billionaires, but they're not making any money. And if you have no revenue, how long are you really willing to float all this? And I realize that the stadium workers, if you apply all your minor, minor league players for an entire season, you're looking at like, maybe under 100 million total. I mean, uh, uh, that's insignificant maybe to an owner, but they're also looking at their bottom line here. How it's, it, all owners are different have mentalities. Some are saying, okay, we're not willing to float this. Others are saying, I'll be a good sport and float this because I want to keep my team intact and other things in place. Um, since there are other options regarding unemployment, things of that nature, um, they may or may not apply to contracts with the minor leaguers, but the staff workers can certainly use that for a extended period of time. So there's just so much up in the air right now. We don't know where it stands. Um, as far as whether or not they're going to be able to get seasons going and get things back to normal here. Um, so, on a later note, just for fun, I was reading in the uh, news this week that Aralus Chapman decided to uh, comment on something other than the uh, season starting. Back in the uh, 2016 World Series, Chicago Cubs versus the Cleveland Indians, now, to give you a little backstory here, Joe Madden had been with the club for a few years. He had been trying to get to the World Series the entire tenure with the Cubs. 
after spending several years in Tampa trying to win a World Series there. And it got to the point where they kept getting knocked out by the Dodgers. They bring in uh, Ch Aroldis Chapman um, from the Yankees on a just a rental basis to the end of the year. He p p uh, helps them shoot right into the postseason, get all the way to NLCS, get into the World Series, and now you're at the point where, okay, you're down three games to one, and you're trying to come back into this thing and take the World Series back from the Cleveland Indians, and you're in a situation where he was using Game 5, he was he would be needing a potential Game 7. Now you have in Game 6, a 7-2 lead going into the 8th inning, and out of nowhere, Joe Madden brings in Aroldis Chapman, and he hasn't pitched the eighth inning and into the, and into the first inning and ninth inning. Now, Madden's excuse is that, you know, this is the World Series here. Yes, I, I need to win this game to get to Game 7, and I had to have a Game 7 to win the World Series, and I'm going to need it for Game 7, but I'm going to go ahead and use it here just to lock this game down. You have got a 7-2 lead here. Uh, and Royals Chapman is saying, I was overused by Madden. I didn't appreciate it. I got burned out. We won the, I got the ring. But it's like, you abused me pretty much. You you, 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 you beat me up here. And he pointed out to this 7-2 this, um, lead in the eighth inning of game six, where he's like, you know what? If it got tight, I would completely understand that. But you got a 7-2 lead in the eighth. Use somebody else. I'm your closer. <laughs> So just for a little bit of fun, I want to highlight the, uh, the the his complaint there and the rationale behind it. I understand Joe Madden. Just like, yeah, yeah, I used him because I wanted to steal the deal on getting the championship. I get that. Ross Chapman saying you didn't have to use me, and you did have to use me for the overtime yesterday inning wins, uh, winning Game Seven to get the ring. It would have been appropriate to use me in Game Five and appropriate to use me in Game Seven, but you should have left me out of Game Seven or Game Six. And I, I honestly, I, I would send a side with Royals Chapman on the work load there because why would you bring a closer into a 7-2 lead in Game 6 of the World Series? Now, I could completely understand if during the regular season the guy hasn't been used for a week or two because you've been losing games or you've been blowing people out or something like that. You might bring him in to get some work in during the course of a season with a 7-2 lead. But this is Game 6 of the World Series. You're going to need Game 7. You have a sizable lead. I'm going to favor Royals Chapman's comments on this one here where it really was overkill on the use of Chapman. I understand from Joe Madden's perspective, yeah, I want to seal the deal, get this ring. I totally get that. Same time, um, as far as tit for tat is concerned, I'm uh, looking at hold him off and, and, until you actually need him and then use him kind of thing. So just for a little bit of fun, I wanted to break down those comments between the tit for tat between the uh, Los Angeles Angels manager, Joe Madden, who was manager of the uh, Chicago Cubs in 2016, and uh, Aroldis Chapman, who is currently a closer for the New York Yankees, who was the rental player for the Cubs that year. Please, if you just happen to uh, come across this channel while you're browsing through YouTube, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any comments or suggestions regarding anything you have today, please leave in the comment section below. I would love to discuss the details about the uh, talks, the stall nature of it all, whether we're going to have a season, whether we're not going to have a season, whose position do you side with, the billionaire owners, the millionaire players, what do you think should happen, what are your ideas, what are your proposals. I've heard some wacky ideas uh, by Harper, and I don't think any of them are practical, but if you want to hear all about those, I'd be happy to cover them in a future video, especially if talks are still stalled next week. So, until next time, have a great day, and thank you for watching.